with the Second Sight people who uh, appear to have something uh, pretty crazy that they called the bionic eye. We're going to talk to Dwayne Tutsui and Terry Byland. How are you doing today, guys? Good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> All right, so um, you've got a pretty scary looking video playing on screen here of some eyeball surgery, and uh, Terry is wearing some fashionable glasses here. What do, what do we have going on? Well, uh, the Argus II is, uh, is a retinal prosthesis that is designed to provide artificial vision uh, for people who have lost it all com uh, as a result of a retinal degenerative disease such as uh, retinitis pigmentosa. And uh, kind of the way that it, that it works is uh, it consists of an array uh, that gets inserted into the eye and uh, uh, an, a series of electronics and external uh, components that will uh, take video uh, out of a camera that the, the patient wears. So, so by array, do you mean uh, like a like a digital sensor would be in a digital camera? Uh, it's more of a it, it, it's it's an electrode array, uh, very similar to uh, I, I like to compare it to an old time baseball scoreboard. So you have this scoreboard that's got a bunch of electrodes or light bulbs, and if you light up certain bulbs into a certain shape, you get shapes. If you light them sequentially, you get movement. Okay. And that's basically the way it works, uh, except that uh, in this case, the input is from a camera that is mounted on a pair of glasses. And okay, so that explains the fashionable eyewear Terry's got going on? Yes, yeah. The, 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 the camera on his glasses will capture an image, and the computer that he has in his pocket here uh, will actually process that, uh, uh, that image and tell the electrode array that's inside the eye which uh, pixels to light up so that they get those shapes and movements and things like that. So, uh, Terry, describe what you're holding in your, in your hand there. Well, this is what they call a video uh, processing unit, and it's like a little mini computer, and there's software in here, uh, and basically uh, there's buttons here that you can push that will help you see uh, indoors, outdoors. Uh, the more light you have to work with, the better the camera that's on the glasses works. Okay, so just like any camera, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And unlike, uh, well, let's say like a Nikon camera, you can you can set the aperture or the the, the other thing to actually allow more light in. Right, right. With this the shutter here, speed. This here, you just try the different buttons until you find one that actually brings in the most light. Oh, okay, Whether okay. It's artificial like this, uh, like for instance, in here, it's not all that bright right here. Right, right. You know, it's not like our natural light, which is really good today, or maybe out there somewhere in the hallway, it's a little bit brighter. But okay, so once you, once you set that, then you can actually see visually, you can see a difference in the imagery for you. Yeah, yeah, it goes from total blackness to being able to uh, watch people move their necks or their heads and things like that. Wow, so what can you see right now? Well, I can, what I'm doing is I'm looking at your face. Okay, the light is actually, you know, shine it, the filter through the camera looking on your face there. Uh, I try to zero in on where I think your face is, you know, as far so as... So you have the basic stuff. shape? Uh, no, no shapes, no. Okay. It's basically, it's the, the field of vision is probably, what, Dwayne, about 20 degrees? 20 degrees, yes. 20 degrees, so you only can take in so much at a time. Okay, that, that's okay. Why, that's why if I want to see the, the sides of your face, I have to scan like this. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's like they said with the, uh, which was the, the latest VR glasses that Microsoft was coming out with. Everybody was all mad because it was a narrow field of view. Same thing. <laughs> it was like a virtual it, reality thing or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So now, now there's a, a couple of components on the sides of the glasses. You've got a, he's got a camera on the front and then a, a circular disc and a square on the side of his glasses. What are those, Dwayne? Right, this is on and off button. Uh, this one, top one up here, is just to, to mute it, uh, if it if it starts making noises. And the one in the middle is an inversion button. So if you want to change something, uh, because of say say if you're looking at something on a on a white wall and you're looking for something that's uh, like a picture that stands out in a dark. So you want color. to reverse the contrast. Yeah, oh, yeah okay. you do that. Oh, cool. The one over here is a regular phase that that doesn't really work that well for me it's more like in your house kind of thing the middle one is high contrast and any time that you see uh, contrast as colors this is the best one to use the one on the end here is called the edge button and for me it's the one that gives me the most light 
and it allows me to see the edges of things, like the windows, doors. Oh, okay. So you don't run into them, huh? Yes, actually, <laughs> yeah. th those are options, and those are all programmable. So uh, what the clinician will do is, depending, because every patient sees something differently, and so what we do is we have a clinician uh, from our company who will actually do all the programming. They'll do a number of diff you know, different algorithms to see what works best for them, and then load that onto those three buttons. So that is fantastic. Those are all, those are all uh, customizable. Okay, so so he's got uh, an implant in his eye that yes. that and then it, there's got to be a connection to the brain somewhere. Well, uh, the the way that it uh, that it works is that um, we activate uh, the retina. So kind of the way that the what 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 the array does is uh, in in retina is pigmentosa, the outermost layer of the retina is diseased, and light that normally comes in through the eye does not activate the photoreceptors because that outer layer is uh, is gone. So what the array does is through electricity, it goes right through the non-functional layer and still activates the functional photoreceptors that lie underneath. Oh, okay. So you didn't have to go into Terry's brain. I thought maybe no. that's why he was so interesting. Not not in Terry's case. <laughs> uh, we do have another. Uh, we do have another product that is starting clinicals later this year called the Orion. And uh, what that uh, it does, uh, the advantage to that one is it's for all other patients who have gone blind for virtually any reason. Uh, you don't even need to have eyes or optic nerves because we bypass all that and stimulate the visual cortex of the brain directly. Uh, wow, we're looking forward to talking to you next year. <laughs> yes, uh, we, uh, later this year we, we expect to start the human clinical trials uh, on, the, uh, on the Orion. So now, uh, even though the Argus 2 is indicated only for people with retinal degenerations, they still have to have uh, still operational uh, photoreceptors underneath, but sure, also sure. they have to have a working optic nerve. But what about all those other people who have gone blind from glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, trauma, cancer? They don't have anything, so with the Orion, we'll be able to address all of those people. So yeah, here's a question. Um, uh, Terry's wearing glasses, but he's got an implant in his eye, but I don't think that you've probably got a wire going from his glasses to his eye. How, is, how, how are those two things talking to each other? Well, the, and how, uh, many, how many weeks can uh, Terry go on a, batter, on a charge? Well, um, actually about it, three hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the, essentially the, the way it works is that it, it is wireless. The, the device uh, is, is implanted in the eye but the glasses, um, the, the, the transmitter coil on the glasses um, both uh, sends the information from the VPU and powers uh, the device. So, oh, okay, so is it inductive or? Yeah, it's through induction. Um, and the, uh, so the, the, the power actually comes from the external batteries that's on the, the video processing unit. Um, the other beautiful thing about the video processing unit is that all of our improvements to resolution uh, are, are software based. So we already have algorithms that we've developed that we're currently testing now to improve resolution uh, that will all be downloaded, simply downloaded to the patient's VPU so they don't need to have another operation or have another device implanted. Um, we can upgrade them uh, through software. Wow. Right, this so is... right now I have 58 working electrodes and they're working on a thing where they can take one electrode and split it into three. So that would upgrade me to about 200 electrodes. Wow. Without any wow. surgery like Dwayne was saying, which the resolution would be a whole lot better. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I just picture Terry going in for a tune-up and getting a, uh, you know, getting his updates. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> all yeah, right. Terry Thank comes in all the time and uh, tests all uh, new algorithms. We, we always have patients come in and test all these new uh, uh, algorithms. So they're, they're the best. Uh, 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 people to, to test it on. Oh, sure. That is just crazy. Well, uh, again, so the company is called Second Sight. The product is called Argus. Is it? It's the Argus 2. All right. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. This is fantastic. Really nice talking to you. Okay, All right. Here. Thank you. Thanks for doing this.